Last night he felt fire, heat coming through his body. He's now completely healed. He can walk. He can hear in Jesus' name. A while ago we heard of Miracle Mike, we've always called him. Uh, Mike Lockwood is his name. And we've come to meet him today and to ask him his testimony. Hi, I'm Michael Lockwood. I'm from Derbyshire. Um, I'm 40 this year. I have a lovely wife, Marie, um, five children, uh, aging from uh, to coming up to two and eight, up to 18. Tell us what condition you were in and how it came about. I was in um, left side weakness um, after, after resulting from a car accident um, three months down the line. Um, I woke up one morning um, not able to feel my left hand side. Um, speech impediment as well. Um, I wasn't. Uh, I w my wife took me to call the paramedics. Previous wife called the paramedics, and I went to hospital. And I had a lumbar puncture done, uh, a brain scan, and it came back as um, a mini stroke. Um, I had ca carers um, was arranged, and I was having carers coming in um, seven days a week. Uh, in a caravan at that time because um, it was the year of the floods in Hull. Yeah, the, it was a massive flood. Uh, the house got damaged, um, you know, uh, about £80,000 worth of damage, um, which I couldn't sort out. A friend sorted all that out for me. Um, and also so, uh, a social worker got involved and then got me into um, a flat, um, a, down, a ground floor flat. Um, which, because it broke my first marriage up, uh, she couldn't accept the, w the way I was. Uh, so I, speech impediment, wasn't able to talk properly. Um, from working full time to doing nothing, it put a lot of pressure on my ex my ex wife. So when did Marie come into your life? Yeah, I met Marie, well we grew up together t um, from being young. Um, it was my uh, loss of my granddad, uh, which sort of, sorry, kindled us together. Uh, we went to the, the to the funeral and, and the wake, and it, um, I opened up to Marie, and it's the first person I've opened up for a long time. Even though I had the, I had the speech impediment, Marie was able to understand what I was actually saying. Nobody else could. Um, that's probably with the caring background that she was in, because Marie did senior care work, but uh, she'd finished my she'd finished my sentences before you know before I could get my words out. Um, I met Marie uh, taught me for who I was. She looked past my disability, my speech impediment. She just, she saw my heart. Um, and it's not about somebody's image or what they look like. She, it's, you know, it's, it's a person's heart. And she taught me at face value, basically, for, for who I was. And she's a blessing, you know, she's... <clears throat> I wasn't looking for anybody, um, but I feel God brought us together. When I moved um, down here with, with, with Marie, because I used to live in Hull, uh, and Marie actually came to live with me, and she, didn't, she was basically homesick, she wanted to come back home. Um, then uh, we applied for a, a property which was in Bolsover first. They said, yes, we can adapt it for you, etc. And when we moved there, they said, no, we can't adapt it for you. So we prayed as a family. We went to C, um, Clay Cross Community Church, which is now C4. Um, and the people at the church were praying for a property uh, which was adapted for myself. Um, the upstairs was adapted. We had a wet room. Um, and we was actually waiting for the stair lift to be put in. So while, the stair, while we was waiting, the carer was supposed to see me down the stairs, help me. Um, because I had left side weakness, you know, and I couldn't move my leg very well. And this particular day, she was in a bit of a rush, so she trotted off down into the living room. And because I couldn't speak or and, and shout because my, my speech impediment, um, I tried to make my way down the stairs myself. There was no carpet uh, on the stairs. Um, I lost my balance, ended up from top to bottom. Um, paramedics was called, put on a spinal board, you know, and taken to hospital, um, and I hurt my lower back. Um, so I was in hospital for about five days uh, until the bed was brought downstairs. They would, they would only let me out of hospital if the bed was brought downstairs. 
uh, at this time Marie was expecting uh, our second child, uh, Joshua. Um, so we had the bed downstairs for a short period of while, a couple of weeks I reckon. Um, then the stair lift was put back in, well put in, sorry. Um, so it was back to normal as possible, you know, sleeping upstairs, um, etc. Um, it was hard, um, not being able to do anything. Um, you know, care of seven days a week, it's pride as well. You know, having somebody um, caring for you, um, being, you know, not very, you know, not very old, basically. You know, you expect these TIAs to be in uh, older people. Um, I felt um, discouraged, you know. Um, I was low um, because I've, I've always been hands-on, doing things, working, domesticated, you know, cooking Sunday roasters, etc. Um, you know, you know, doing the property up, painting, dec you know, decorating woodwork, you know, all man manly things really. And that when that, when I couldn't do that, you know, um, I didn't feel like a man. Um, Sorry. I couldn't do much with Casey when the way I was. Um, Marie brought Casey up. And it, it, was, it was hard because I wasn't able to in, interact with my daughter, you know, changing the nappies and bathing, bathing her. And I didn't have that bond. And I... I missed out on that for just over, well, just, well, over a year. And then Marie became pregnant again with Joshua. Um, I was able to do more, than, but this was after my healing. I went to a conference in Hull. Uh, Jared Cooper arranged, there was a meeting in the Hull City Hall, evangelist Nathan Morris. Um, he's in America. He, it was um, Bay Revival, uh, when Bay Revival broke out. You know, he saw mighty uh, healings, you know, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, people in wheelchairs, um, spinal injuries, etc. And I just wanted that for myself. You know, I went to church and other meetings and I wanted it for myself. I see other people being healed, you know, and I'm thinking, God, why? Why not me? And the enemy is always on your shoulder saying, it's not going to be you, it's not going to be you. And I'm saying, God, please, I need this. And I wanted to throw that towel in, you know. I was so low, you know, you have to be in that place yourself to, to realise how disheartening it can be and how low I was. And God spoke to me and says, no, don't throw that white, white towel in, I will heal you in my time. And I, I grasped hold of that with both hands. And I, I trusted God, and I had hope, and I had belief. And I didn't have the funds to go to this meeting. My auntie paid for me to go to the conference. And we went to Hull. Marie pushed me in the wheelchair. And the On the 8th of March um, this year, uh, I went to a conference, um, Nathan Morris, um, a very good conference, and at the end of the um, the meeting, I went out for prayer. Um, it wasn't Nathan who prayed for me; he was dealing with other things. But people from my this church, my church that I go to, and um, a lot of the people from City Hall, the pastors there, prayed for me. And um, throughout the service, I could feel this heat in my body, like fire. And then I could, I could start feeling it in my left side, which I couldn't feel in my left side. And then the, the, the bloke was praying, um, Nigel Lennon his name was, um, was praying for me, saying the words and uh, um, be healed in the name of Jesus and, and stand up. Um, which I can stand up, but it was a battle um, that particular night um, without, without my sticks. Um, but I, with Marie grabbing my hands like this, um, I got up and then I started taking small steps slowly and then it got faster and faster and faster and then we just jumped up and we praised God and it was like our feet didn't touch the ground um, we was on our backs, I was, we were both crying um, 
of the overwhelming of what's happened you know it's amazing that God can heal people and um, I just praise God for everything that he's done uh, he, you know it's is 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 amazing welcome him in this place people have been touched and healed right now just in his presence Um, Nathan Morris heard this commotion going on um, and he came running um, and he asked what had happened so I explained that you know I came in the wheelchair and now I'm not in the wheelchair I'm, I'm walking and he asked what the things was in my ears and there the were hearing aids um, I had them from being a child and he said we're not having half measured so he, he told me to take them out and he put his fingers like that in my, in my ears and he started praying for me and um, I was touched by the Holy Spirit and I ended up on, on the floor um, and then I, as I came round I, I had this lady say can you hear me and I said yes I can hear you but it was a whisper it wasn't like I'm talking now and it was like wow praise God you know it's made me I can walk now I can I can hear properly and it's just amazing what's happening Nathan, this is Michael Lockwood from Derbyshire. He had a stroke that resulted from a car accident. He also then fell down a flight of stairs which left him in a wheelchair. He literally could only walk a few feet on crutches daily. He was also wearing hearing aids in both ears since he was three. Last night he felt fire, heat coming through his body. He's now completely healed. He can walk, he can hear in Jesus' name. I've got two children and um, the following day um, me and my wife, my two kids Joshua and um, Casey went to Chesterfield and um, I've never able to push my son since he was born and on the 9th of um, March I um, pushed my son around Chesterfield for two hours and that just felt so so amazing I felt so blessed that I've got my life back um, and I can do things with my kids that I've never done before. Um, I can play with them, I can jump around, I can run after them and chuck them up in the air, it's just amazing. Um, Nathan Morris at the end of the meeting on Thursday asked us to go back to City Hall on the Friday and um, he wanted me to give me testimony in, in City Hall. Um, so we travelled back up on the Friday with a few people and it was just, I was so blessed to speak the word of God and tell so many people that our God is great and he's merciful and he delivers and he is mighty. He never fails us and I'm just so happy, so happy and praise God. I praise God. That's incredible. Pray that healed me I can jump around I can I've been to the gym which I couldn't do before I did 40 minutes in the gym on Tuesday pushing my son about in his push chair on Chesterfield the day after for two hours it's just, it's, God's just amazing he's given my life back and I thank God thank you the day after he, um, he got healed he actually ran down the stairs um, and it actually frightened me because he didn't have any shoes on and I says to him can you please put shoes on because it was the same noise as it was when he fell down the stairs and it it just worries me a bit if, if you know what I mean and I just says next time just please use shoes and walk down don't run down but he was in that much of a high he did it anyway yeah yeah the, the, the um on, when we came back from um Nathan Morris on uh, the 8th, the one thing that I couldn't do on, on our wedding day was carry Marie over the threshold and uh, I actually did that when I got back, you know, it was something that I needed to do because I couldn't do it before and... And he did a handstand against the wall as well. <laughs> it just went a bit whappy when we got back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just feel, it's like I've got um. An inner strength that I've never had before, even when I was the way I was before, before my accident, I didn't have the strength that I've got now. I'm picking people up and 
I don't, I don't really don't mind me saying this, but I actually tipped Marie upside down, you know, just to test my strength that God's given me back because, you know, he's a, he's a healer and I'm just grateful for that, you know, I really am. On the following Wednesday, um, I um, had an appointment at the, um, for my ears. Um, so we, we went and um, it was an hour's test, which is longer than what it should have been and um, it came back normal. I have got two photocopy evidence of um, the before and after. Um, I went to see my, I went to see a doctor before and, and it's not the one that I normally go to, so he didn't know my background. And um, he wanted to me to come off the tablet slowly because I, I was on all sorts of tablets, um, diazepam, um, tramadol, amitriptyline, paracetamol, I was on all sorts and they wanted to wing me off them and I, I took the prescription uh, and then I prayed about it when I got home and God's a healer, he doesn't do half measures and I put them in the cupboard and I didn't take, take them. Um, then I made an appointment to see my normal doctor which knows my background and um, which was Tuesday last week I went to see her and when she came out and called my name um, I stood up and a jaw at the floor and um, we went into the doctor's room and um, I says have you heard what's she heard. happened and she said yeah I've heard on the grape grapevine on, on what's happening but can you enlighten me and uh, I was just really enough you know that I felt heat through my body my left side I could feel heat and that I went out in prayer in my, in my wheelchair and afterwards I took the steps and she was just gobsmacked um, and she says look I'm happy for you it's you know it's your beliefs and um, I told her you know it, if you want to see it it's on my, the website already on YouTube um, and she just she was so happy for us that I've got my life back and that's basically it. I walked out of that building you know no wheelchair even aids out but when I came in, I was doing handstands, uh, you know, up against the wall, uh, lifting Marie up, you know. But the strength that I've, I've got now was, is more than what I had before. I can't explain why that is. Um, but I just went a bit wappy, you know, because from being in a wheelchair to being able to stand and, and doing things, I, it's just amazing what God's done. It's turned my life around. I felt like a man again, um, I felt like part of the family, even though it was a family, there was something missing because I wasn't able to interact with my two, two children, so I felt like I became a man again. And presumably you were on benefits at this time? Yeah, I was on benefits, um, didn't want to be on benefits, I didn't want to be the way I was, didn't choose to be the way I was, um, but when, when, I, when I was healed, um, the f I was healed on March 8, 2012. The following, the following Monday, I rang up my welfare rights officer and I said, look, I want to surrender everything. Um, I don't want it anymore. God's healed me. And he says, no. He says, You're, um, what if you have a relapse? He says, I won't have a relapse. My God, don't give me relapses. Um, he says, you're surrendering it too early. Just wait a bit. I went, no. I says, God's healed me. I'm stepping out and I want everything to go back. Uh, it took a while for it to all go through. I had to write, he wrote it, sorry, he typed a letter, sent it to me. I had to sign it to say that like, I wanted everything to go back and benefits stopped basically. I went on job seekers uh, for a little while. Then a job found me. Uh, I wasn't looking for a job, uh, it found me. Um, I was doing gardening for, uh, for a little while. What is God calling you to now? I've plucked the courage to, to start singing at uh, C4 um, and it built my confidence so much. I started doing uh, drama as well, which is, you know, um, which we do at the church, puppetry uh, at C4 church, um, you know, ministering through puppets, dance, uh, miming um, and, and little scripts. Um, so that brought my confidence um, uh, a long way. This year I went to another church uh, that was at the village hall in Matlock and I, I went there uh, and I met 
Pastor Terry and shared in my testimony and he said, well, that's amazing. You know, and uh, from from then I started to go to that church for a little while. I was I was between two churches. I had a little a little battle with God really, but you can never never win with God. He's always right. And um, I was praying about it. You know where where I need to be, where my foundations need to be, because you know I feel God's taking me up in another level. The hardest decision I've had to make is is. Um, to leave Clay Cross because they've done so much for us. I've been part of that church for for nine, ten years, part of that church. You know, we got married there and memories. Um, but we went, you know, I went to see the elders, told them what I felt, like the Holy Spirit's telling me to move to another church and he's stepping me up. He's, he's taking me out of my comfort zone. This is what I feel. He's taking me out of my comfort zone and there's another level. And the church prayed for us, uh, Ken, uh, Jane, Matt and Esther, they all prayed for us and we went with the blessing. Um, I'm in the worship team at uh, River Network. Uh, I started in the worship team there, um, singing, um, praying for people as well. I'm in the ministry, um, praying for people, evangelising to different, you know, to people. We was at uh, the barbecue in the park yesterday. Uh, we've got a big massive banner it says healing on it and um, people were coming and asking for prayer and Terry led uh, a few people to Christ and we prayed for the sick so it, it's it's what I've wanted to do for a long time um, so not what I wanted to do, I felt what I felt God want me to do and doors are opening um, I've, I've, I've had opportunities where I've been up and down the UK sharing my testimony. And I just think it needs to be out there because it gives hope to other people. What God has done for me can do for others. It doesn't matter what um, minute your illness is, you know, by his stripes, we are healed. And, you know, and we just have to have faith, belief and trust. What do you see as God's purpose for you in the future? I, I feel God's calling me to, to ministry, um, to, to be, I've, I've had visions. Um, when, uh, the Friday night, when I shared my testimony in Hull, um, Nathan, Nathan Morris says, whoever's last night it is, come out for prayer and we'll pray for you. So I went out, massive line, and every time he got close, I could feel the heat. The, the heat was so, it was burning. I could, every time I got close, it, the heat was getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And he put his hand on my head, bang, down, under the anointing. And I had this vision that I was, on a, I, was, I was on a stage at the pulpit preaching to thousands of people. And I feel God has called me to, to, to minister and also to share my testimony, not just in the UK, but abroad as well. And that, I have been given that opportunity um, to go to America next year. So I'm trusting God for this, um, for, for this opportunity. I'm praying into it. Um, and that's what I feel God's calling me to do. Um, it's just giving hope to other people. And it's by the word of your testimony, others shall be healed. And it's, you know, if you like, you know, it's, it's a, by his stripes you are healed. Those who believe shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. And I just believe that in my, in my spirit. To be honest with you, I'm, 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 I'm on fire for God. I'm burning from the inside out. You know, I'm just so passionate about what God's done in my life. I, I believe he, he can do it for others. It's turned from being low to the lowest as I was. To, I'm, I'm up here for God. You know, the, the, enemy's, the enemy is out to rob kill and destroy but God has a better purpose and a plan for you he's got a better plan for me and he's got a better plan for the, for yourself out there I have prayed for people and they have recovered people with glasses arthritis hip problems back problems it, it's believing and I'm going back to the scripture again those who believe shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover I'm a vessel for God it's not by my might it's by his it's not by my strength, it's by Jesus' strength. Before I was healed, 
before my before my daughter's first birthday, she started having epileptic fits. We went we went to the doctors. Doctors transferred us to Kalo. We went for the appointment at Kalo, and Kalo said she needed to go to Sheffield to get these electrodes put on her head to basically test to see if she is um, epileptic. There was three occasions we were supposed to have gone, and that I was having a flare up, or I couldn't, I couldn't cope. I was in pain, and this particular night, Casey was having one, and I says, "Lord, what do I do? What, Lord, what do I do?" He say, "Lay hands on the child that I gave to you. She's a gift from me." Now I was ill at this time, so it just proves how much faith I had in Jesus that He does heal. So I laid hands on Casey. And I said, I rebuke the sickness, I command this sickness to leave her body right now. Sickness, you have no authority over this body and by his stripes you are healed. From that night on, Casey's never had one since. Never. So I just feel that like that needs to be said as well because it just proves how much faith I had in Jesus. Yeah. He healed all them years ago and he can heal today. He can heal you right now. Where you're at now. I, I, I feel like I need to pray for someone who's suffering with migraines and it's making you sick and making you miserable and you've gone to the doctors and it's not, and it's not, it, the doctors are not doing anything about it. I rebuke the migraines in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke it. You have sickness, you have no authority over that body right now. I command that sickness to leave and by his stripes you are healed. I had to carry uh, Marie over the threshold again because it just um, reminds me on what God has done to, done for me. He's healed me, um, give me full strength back, um, and I just it just brings back memories on the first first time I actually did it. So I, I had to do it again. It was mind blowing, um, just a massive shock. It's it's just changed everything, and it, it's just amazing what God can do, really. Um, went into the kitchen and he was just jumping about. Um, he did handstands, um, chucking me up in air, and it was like, cracky, what's going on? It's just from how he was to to how he was when he came home. It's just like cracky. It's just yeah, mind blowing.